what's up everybody, hope you're having a good day. I have a couple of quick tips for you today to create some nice simulations, and we're gonna be using a ocean to demonstrate, but these concepts can be applied to some other things as well. All right, so what we have in our scene here is a plane, which is our ocean, you can see it right here. And on that plane, we have a cloth tag. The bendiness is at 30, stretchiness two, zero bounciness, a little bit of friction, and you can see the settings here, mass 1.9. So nothing too crazy, it's just a cloth tag on here. And under the forces tab, you can see that we have two turbulences. So this turbulence has a scale of 0.6, so it's very small, and turbulence two has one that's quite a bit bigger. All right, so if we hit play, you can see that this is our ocean, and we have turbulence one set on right now, and it's affecting this entire ocean plane. So the thing about an ocean is that the water will look different based on where it is. If it's out in the open ocean, it'll look a little bit different, but it should also respond to these rocks. And when the water gets into a shallower place with rocks, a lot of times it'll kind of swell up and you'll have a sort of a bigger uh, swelling action rather than the little ripples out in the open ocean. And you really wanna be able to dial in the different simulations based on where it is in your scene. So here's how we're gonna do that. Let me uh, turn on this Turbulence 2 for you really quick, just so you can see what this one looks like. This is the one that is a lot bigger and you have some big swells, but we don't want this to affect the whole plane out in the open ocean just by the rocks. So we're gonna go to our ocean plane and we're gonna right click on it and go to other tags and we'll click on a vertex map. And right now it'll be all red. We wanna specify where it is interacting with these rocks and we're gonna do that using fields. So we'll go to our vertex map tag here and we're going to click use fields and that will open up a field section we're going to delete the freeze and we're going to add the objects that we want it to interact with which is these rocks so we'll find that object the stones we'll drag them into here and if we click on that we have some options down here so we'll give it a second to calculate and now you can see that wherever this plane is intersecting or bumping into these rocks we're getting the yellow meaning that the vertex map is applying to these sections. And we can change that under the radius here. So right now it's at 20. If we double that, we can grow that out. And now we wanna use the yellow sections to drive that second turbulence. And we can do that by going to our second turbulence. And this one also has a fields tab. If we click on that, we can drag that vertex map that we just created into the field slot and let go. And now this turbulence number two is only going to affect the yellow areas. So if we click off and we hit play, you should be able to see that wherever it's hitting these rocks, we're having these nice big swells and wherever it's open ocean, we're having the little ripples. So that's the general concept is just specifying different parts in your scene where you want all of your forces to act differently. You can really dial it in. All right, I have one bonus tip for you today and that is how to make a ocean blend into an HDRI. If we go to this ocean plane, you can see that it's pretty small. And if we extended it way into the back, there will be just so much detail and so many polygons to deal with that it would be very, very slow to render. So instead of that, we have a plane here and we're gonna blend it into the background HDRI with a texture. So let me just show you what we have here in the texture. We have a very simple ramp. If we undo this ramp, so we just have a really generic uh, liquid wine texture that we just kind of modified and made it a bit green. And you can see that it doesn't blend into this background plate at all. It's uh, quite green and the background HDRI plate is quite blue, but it's very easy. All you have to do is add a ramp. And in this ramp, we have a very simple white to black gradient, which we can play around with the knots. And what we've done is just take this ramp and pipe it right into the opacity. And when you do that, it's gonna blend the outside of this plane. It's gonna blend it into an alpha channel, which will pick up that HDRI in the background. And you see that it very nicely blends the two together. So there's a couple quick tips for you. I hope you found them useful. Huge shout out to Alessandro Bancio for helping me out with these tutorials. And uh, thanks for checking out Pixelab. We'll talk to you next time. Ciao.